how do we function in a connected way? We function in a connected way this, through this process. What I've just said was the open system that can receive information and that can transfer information is the optimal system. And that happens through the communication process. Right now, as we sit here, our cells are communicating with each other. There's transfer of information, transfer of food in our cells, uh, and that's part of the communication process. And uh, it's the way in which we're able to maintain our connectedness. So if you look at it this way, that the connectedness is structurally the way we're structured, and cu communication is the way we maintain that structure, that is, our function. So if you look at it as structure and function, you talk, if you think about connectedness as structure and communication as function. Now, uh, let me, uh, t I've uh, talked about the fully functioning person. I want to switch now and take a moment to talk about the non-fully function or the dysfunctional person. Because let's see if we switch and look at the dis at dysfunction, whether these concepts serve us in good stead. That is, if they're durable concepts, they ought to be just as usable in describing dysfunction as function. And, and uh, when you look at the study that I indicated about loneliness and the, the uh, dysfunctional immune system, we find that the individual who is dysfunctional in communication is also dysfunctional this way too. In other words, the person who is detached from relationships to others, who does not make a connection, who does not, has no way of communicating, no way of staying in touch with other people, is also a person who is dysfunctional throughout her or his uh, human system. So that the, the capacity to stay in touch, the capacity to stay in contact through communication gives us really the basis for maintaining our connectedness. Now, when you look at, at uh, this function, if you take a book in abnormal psychology, you'll find about a hundred different ways that people can, can have dysfunction. They can be depressed, they can be manic, they can be uh, phobic, they can be, uh, they can di be dissociative, uh, that is, they can forget their past. There are a lot of ways in which persons can be dysfunctional, and all you have to do, you can, we could get a list or open an a, uh, abnormal psychology book, but you know there's one thing, one phenomenon that is common to all dysfunction, and that is disruption in communication. Think about your patients and think about the ways in which they are not connected, the ways in which they do not communicate adequately, their dysfunction in maintaining contact with themselves and with others. No matter what psychopathology you see, it can be varied all over the place. You're going to find communication dysfunction. For example, the depressed person shuts down her whole system or his, own, his whole system is shut down and half dead and, and therefore minimizes. They're out of touch with their digestive system very often. They're out of touch, they, they are not able to, they're out of touch with their physiological system. They're not able to, to relax, to put it to rest. They will be hyperactive and, and have insomnia. The phobic person shuts out those things of which he is afraid does not seek experience, says no to experience, no to contact uh, with regard to whatever the phobia is, and go right down the line. The dissociative person, by the way, and this to me is interesting in terms of the horizontal dimension, the, the dissociative person is disconnected with her own past. That is, the horizontal developmental aspect is disrupted. And by the way, I, uh, a friend of mine told me you think you have enough arrows in this? And I said, sure, look at all those arrows. He said, that, you're missing one arrow. You're missing one arrow? Where could I possibly put it? He says, see that horizontal dimension? That arrow has to go both ways. 
that the connectedness, the communication goes back and forth. And by golly, he was right. Didn't have enough arrows. So if, if you want to, if you want to put an arrowhead on the other side and recognize that connectedness involves two-way communication from present to past and past to present. And he's right. And now I, there may be, you may see other arrows, so please let me know if I've left out any more arrows, okay? Because I'd like to put them all in. They, they, they look nice. <laughs> Okay, let's see, where was I? Oh, I was talking about this function. I think it's time now for me to just pause and before I go to a new paragraph to see what you all are thinking and what, what questions you might have about this. What I've said is the human system thrives this way and also gets into trouble this way. And that's all there is to it. Now, what we do about it in psychotherapy, well, that's another story. We'll get to that. But let me check and see if you have any questions or anything, or any assertions, or if you want to argue, please argue with me a little bit.